Congratulations to Francis Ngannou. Anthony Joshua to face Francis Ngannou in Saudi Arabia March as fight is confirmed. So Francis has beaten all the odds. He's proved all the naysayers wrong. When he left the UFC, they said he wouldn't be able to make it without the UFC. He didn't know what he was doing. This big black African man that didn't speak English. What's he doing? Blah, 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 blah. Look at him. He's proved everyone wrong. He basically beat Tyson Fury. He got fucking robbed for that and absolutely displayed that he has great boxing skills. And now he's secured a fight against fucking Anthony Joshua in Saudi Arabia in March. Amazing. Courtesy of Sky Sports News, um, former un un um, unified heavyweight champion Joshua is expected to face Ngano, a former UFC champion after the planned fight was announced by promotional team Matchroom and Queensberry on Friday night. A press conference has been scheduled for January 15th to reveal more details. A report suggesting that Joshua will face Ngano on Friday, March 8th in Riyadh. Um, Deontay Wilder could feature on the small, same bill despite his points loss to Joseph Parker in December, which ended hopes of American fighting Joshua on that day. Yeah, so it was meant to be jo Deontay Wilder facing Joshua, which, you know, according to his previous performance, Joshua would have probably beaten him. Um, but now because Wilder lost, they're moving on and jumping onto the fucking Francis and Garner train. Um, obviously, that's amazing. So I'd love to see it. You know what this reminded me of? You know what this amazing news? Do you know what this amazing news of Anthony Joshua facing fucking Francis Agano? Do you know what it reminded me of? Bitch, you guessed it. Brendan Schaub hating. Do you guys remember Brendan Schaub hating? Brendan Schaub hating Francis Ngano, not signing on with the UFC and not signing on with fucking, what's his fucking team people he likes? One championship or something, right? He was hating on the fact that um, Francis Ngano bet on himself and left the UFC and didn't sign that shitty deal. And then he was angry or upset that Francis Ngannou didn't take the first deal that came across his table and he started trashing him for it. But do you remember when he started flip-flopping? So look at this flip-flop. I remember I put this on my actual channel, this video. Look at this video when he flip-flops, right? Look at these clips of Brendan flip-flopping on his view on fucking Francis. Championship goes, we believe in mixed martial arts. We believe in martial arts in general. So Francis will have an opportunity to A, fight for world championship in mixed martial arts, and B, we're open to him fighting boxing. He boxed first. That was his caveat with the UFC. Well, I want to box first and then fight in the UFC, and UFC went absolutely not. When championships say, cool, we'll let you do that. We'll be part of that. We'll be part of the marking of that. We'll do all that for you. Now, what's he going to do? It's not good, man. And I don't know who needs to get in France here. Nobody needs you. Mixed martial arts across the board, boxing across the board will be just fine. Nobody's bigger than the game. Nobody. Nobody. The closest person we've ever had that was bigger than the game is Conor McGregor. He has some a little more leverage than Francis, right? So for Francis, like, I don't know who you're listening to, man, but this is not going well. This has been a f***ing disaster. What Francis is doing is leading the way for other fighters that are stuck, that feel like they have no voice, that feel like the UFC is the only show in town, even if they're mistreated. Look at the flip-flop. Look at the flip-flop. Well, as soon as Tyson Fury fight gets confirmed, look at the flip-flop. What Francis is doing is he's taking the hits for them going, no, 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 look, there is a way to do this. There's another route you can go. Shout out to, to his agent, you know, mm -hmm. who took all, Markel took all this shit. What are you doing? You're ruining his career. What's up now? What's up now? You know, yeah. they made the right decision. They, went, they crawled through some... Like Andy Dufresne, they came out on the other side. Now they're fighting Tyson Fury. From it Buddy takes cojones, dude. Yeah, you're Imagine the shit he went through. Remember the taxi guy? You the got the hate. Tax? You were the hater. The you were the through? hater. You, went you were the shit. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. It must feel good. They knew what they were doing. Shout out to Markel, man. You did it, brother. Proud Fucking of you, man. disgusting. And Francis, my God, Shameless. dude. This is insane. Yuck. This is history, dude. What yuck, 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 yuck. But it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. Look at this clip from when Francis is leaving the UFC. Listen to how Brendan speaks about Francis and Ghana. Listen to how he speaks about him. The UFC did get another black eye. Again, no pun intended. Yo, when Brendan was drinking, again, I didn't notice at the time, but God almighty, bro. He, was, he looked hungover every single day. The puffiness was crazy. His skin's already terrible anyway. He, he clearly looks like somebody... I think he doesn't even bother using moisturizer. I don't. I think he's one of those guys that doesn't believe in moisturizer. But because, even though he doesn't believe in moisturizer, just his puffiness of his face is just, yo, he was a real alcoholic. He went for a real alcoholic arc 
you know, unnecessary. Let's continue. Because the news was out. We've all been waiting for a Francis John Jones fight. And then some poor fella at T-Mobile was like, John Jones, Cyril gone? I'll get it up. They're like, no, we didn't say that. He's like, you said that? Cool, I'll do it now. And then he, he didn't have a job today because he leaked the news before the UFC. And if we learned anything from the Errol Hawani situation, when you leak news, when they don't want you to leak the news, there's nothing the UFC hates most. They want to control the narrative at all this times. This poor work. <laughs> worker at t-mobile arena didn't get the memo and he blasted all over and you know and he got out and when he came out my uh my team was like hey look francis zero gone but my team when it came out my team honestly people that use these sort of like grandiose words to make themselves appear more professional always really cringe me out and gross me out i'm heading to the studio what do you mean your second room in your in your house I'm going to the office. What you mean your fucking garage? I was talking to the board. What you mean your best friend on WhatsApp? My team. Who's your team? Who Chin? In the group chat. Chin texts you in the group chat. My team hit me up. Team. Huh? They say it's not real. This could be fake. You know, someone's just trolling the UFC. I went, hold on. If it's on the T-Mobile banner and it's out there, I will guarantee you this is the fight. Nobody makes that mistake. And there's no way they're signing Francis either. Fast forward about eight, <laughs> eight hours later, boom, it becomes official. And then the news Francis uh, decided not to sign with the UFC gets released. Brendan Shaw, the insider. Brendan Shaw, the one guy who... Dana White has made it very clear, hates. He's not, he doesn't have an invite to go to fucking, you know, live UFC events. I, I think he knows himself if he went there and Dana knew he was there. Dana's so petty, he would actually get him and score it out of the building. I'm sure he would. Dana's such a piece of shit like that. And he hates so hard and he holds grudges and never forgives, really, unless you go to him with your cap in hand. I'm sure if, if Brendan did turn up to a live UFC event, Dana would get him escort, escorted out of that fucking, you know, arena, that venue. So the fact that he talks about UFC stuff with just certainty, as if he knows anything going on, it's like, bro, you don't fight, you don't train, you don't roll, you don't do anything that involves fighting anymore. You just talk about shit that you read on the internet, but then he acts like he's plugged into everyone, everything and everybody. It's like, come on, Brendan, man. Here's what I know on Francis Ngannou. As soon as I heard the news, it bummed me out. I want, I want Francis in the UFC for a variety of reasons. But B, I'm really close with Francis's uh, agent, Markel. When I say- Imagine him being close to Francis's agent, but he speaks about Francis the way he speaks about him. Something doesn't add up. And this to me is another, again, my theory is my theory, and I'm probably chalking out my ass, but I honestly think this guy has an issue with black people. I think there's something there. Maybe it's one of his, you know, unaddressed past you know childhood traumas like i mentioned mine about you know those kids that basically didn't want to be my friends anymore which might be the reason why i don't have any real friends when i'm an adult and i kind of stare away from getting close to people maybe brendan has something like that in his you know in his childhood where maybe he you know thinks you know his football career didn't take off the way it did because of some really athletic black dudes who took his spot or something like that maybe there's something in there or maybe some black dude in college fucked his girlfriend or something but there's definitely something there it's definitely something about him with black guys that he just has a weird <laughs> sort of vibe with and how he talks about them. Because the way he talks about Francis here, even though he's meant to be friends with Francis's manager, I think he might be Francis's ex-manager now, but it just doesn't make any sense. I'd say close, I've known for probably eight years. Eight years, we'll text during big fights, we'll text with Francis News. I was not aware that he doesn't work with Francis anymore and hasn't for a few months. So I'm really close with Francis's manager. I had no idea he doesn't talk to, he doesn't work with Francis. It's like, what? <laughs> I thought you were close to him though. Exactly, Koyla. Talk to him every day. He's my, <laughs> we got way back. But you didn't know he didn't work with Francis. You talk all the time about Francis on text, but you didn't know he worked with him. He did not work with him anymore. Make it make sense. So when I heard the France news, I just texted him, what happened? He goes, beats me. I don't work with him anymore. Like, Excuse me? I said, well, who negotiated the deal? Who, who, how did this not get done? He goes, Francis represented himself. 
I sent the emoji of a hand girl like this. Ugh. I like that Francis. Describing the emoji that he used and then just sounding it out without just saying, I used a palm to face emoji is such a sign of his redactedness. That's how you know he's a little bit like slow. He had to sound out and motion the emoji for you to get what he meant. <laughs> he couldn't just say, I sent the palm to face emoji and just shook my head. Like he had to like, <laughs> let's do it one more time. That was fucking hilarious. The emoji of a hand girl like this. Oh, I <laughs> like that Francis wants to bet on himself to get a deal done. I would consider myself kind of a smart dude, not the smartest in the room ever, any room I walk into, but I know a few things about a few things. You know, when it comes to business, uh, in regards to UFC fighters, I've done a pretty good job outside the UFC. I've been in those <laughs> I'm not negotiating rooms. This guy is. That's what you need to be successful. I've told you before plenty of times on this stream, guys. I honestly do think if you want to be a success in your life, you need a little bit of like, you need a little bit, what is it, is it undeserving? You need a little bit of delusional confidence. You need to be just delusional flat out. You need to have delusions of grandeur. That's what you need. You need to have such a high opinion of yourself that the more you say how much of a beast you are, just because you say it confidently, people are forced to agree or comply with what you say that's what you basically need to do having like contrition being humble um whatever right all that shit that's not going to get you far actually getting you far is faking it till you make it and believing what you say like i'm the smartest guy in the room i've done a pretty good job of my career post ufc i'm basically the most successful ufc fighter post ufc ever in the history of the ufc my career should be studied my career should be you know a fucking a curriculum at fucking harvard or something people should analyze how i've been able to go from being a beast of a fucking ufc fighter to a beast of like that kind of confidence that's what you need to be successful in life i have two college degrees francis is how 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 does Brendan have two college degrees? How? How? The American school system is crazy. How the fuck does this guy have two college degrees? He can barely spell his own name. There's proof of it. There's proof of him giving out the fucking discount code for something. Oh, he's advertising on his fucking show and he can't spell Shorb. He can't even spell his own name. S-H-A-B or something. I think he said as a code thing. It's like, bro, you can't spell your own name. Wow. Two college degrees, yeah? Cool. Business shark, yeah? Cool. First language isn't even English, and he has no business degree. <laughs> I'm telling you, they will eat you alive in there. <laughs> I've been in that room. I thought I could handle it. Trust me, of course it didn't go well. Of course it didn't do well. They have all the chips. That's they like know just... every single angle you're going to come yeah. from, and they're ready for it, dude. I wish I was. Zen xenophobic Papa. I love it. Xenophobic Papa. <laughs> xenophobic and racist Papa is fucking great. He can't even speak English. <laughs> the irony is, Brent Francis speaks better English than Brendan. That's the irony. The irony is, Francis and Garner what learned to speak english in his late 20s and he actually speaks english better than brendan that's the funny thing about it <laughs> would have gotten his ear like whoa, whoa even if you don't sign with a lawyer have, hire the lawyer on an hourly basis have them in there with you so you know the language of what they're telling you it's not so much that Hey, we're going to pay more than we paid Brock Lesnar. Yes or no? It doesn't work like that. It's 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 confusing. They're telling you all these angles. They're bringing up this stuff, this thing. You're dealing with a lot. A fighter at this point should not be representing themselves. Everyone goes, well, Sugar Sean does or this guy does. I get it. It's a little different here when you're talking about championship level fighters. When you talk about white people, right? It's a bit different when you're talking about white people. That's what he meant to say. Sugar Sean does it, yeah, but he's white, so he's right. <laughs> <laughs> white is right <laughs> so that's fine white is right 
especially when talking about Francis Ngannou, who's currently the the was the heavyweight champion of the world. It's just not the smartest route to go. So I heard that. I thought, of course, a deal didn't get done. So that's Brendan hating on fucking um, Francis. More Brendan videos hating on Francis, please. We need more. But obviously the main event, you have freaking Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou. Um, if you're one of those people that are like, Tyson Fury is just going to outclass him. This is stupid. I'm not going to pay for this. I get all that. I get all that. But the one thing that makes this different than a Connor oh, man, versus it's so choppy, Tor- bro. What's going on with my computer today? Everything is really fucking choppy, isn't it? What's happening? Maybe I'll put the bit right down. It's so fucking choppy. <laughs> I Play get it. Logan Paul versus Floyd. Is Francis Ngannou, if Tyson Fury... Yo, for big whatever- up, Scott. I appreciate you, Scott. Baba really wanted him in UFC to fight John Africa. Exactly, 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 exactly. <laughs> John Africa. <laughs> yeah, I still love that name, honestly, man. You never live that down. But big up, Scott. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> Decides to take his eye off the prize if he takes one nanosecond off in that fight. And Francis happens to land a left hook, an uppercut, a right hand, whatever it is, that fight is over. That's why you're paying for this fight. Is he going to outbox Tyson Fury? And not in a, ch- not a chance. But is there a pop? <laughs> Famous words, isn't it, right? And if you watched the fight, you would have known. Guess what Francis did? He outboxed Tyson Fury. <laughs> Possibility <laughs> yeah. at a plus 700, he can land an uppercut, a left hook, a right hand in a frenzy. There's a chance, and I want to be part of that. I'm gonna be watching it. Francis is that damn talented, he can hit. If I'm his coach, I'm going caution the wind. We're not training any technique. You're gonna freaking Homer Simpson this thing, run at him like you did against Rosenstruck. Do that. We're not gonna try and be cute and sit back and pick this dude. So he never really rated Francis, isn't it? He's almost dis- diminishing Francis, demol- de- you know, de- um, demolishing Rosenstruck. He's basically saying that that was a lucky win. He just kind of, you know, just ran at him. It's like, so there's no skill to what he does, no technique to what he does, nothing to be credited for. It's just him being what? Like a big black dude that hits hard. That's all it is. There's no skill whatsoever with Francis. Forget your jab. Forget what you have, what we're doing on the pads. You, this is a street fight. If you sit back and you try to outbox Tyson Fury, he's going to change your life, and it's not going to be good. If you if this thing goes the distance, you will never fight the same ever again. He's going to box your brains in. We don't want that. Go out on your shield. You, in order the, to win, the fight, irony, man, of what actually happened in the fight is fucking incredible. I find it also interesting, Brendan being a former fighter and just being so, like not good at predicting fights like there are guys on youtube there's guys on twitter and social media in general who predict fights way better than brendan like regular dudes who are able to predict fights better than him i find that really funny isn't it france has to get this done with pure chaos in two rounds if this thing goes past two rounds it's gonna get dicey and it's gonna get ugly tyson fury is the best Heavyweight to ever put on those 10 ounce gloves. I'll take all your debates. Who you want? Evander, bring it. Tyson, bring it. Who else you got? Bring it. <laughs> Lennox Lewis, George Foreman, whatever. He's the best to ever do it. He can do, he can go. Saying Tyson Fury is better than Lennox Lewis is a very uh, casual boxing opinion, I think, in my personal opinion. But hey, what do I know? Go forwards and go backwards he can power shot he and it's also a bit of recency bias in there too do you know what i mean it's like just because you watch tyson fury nowadays you just completely forgot about you know the 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 fucking amazing performances that fucking lennox lewis put on the fight and the caliber of people he was fighting too it's like come on bro come on i know tyson fury is good but let's not dismiss what fucking lennox lewis did in that ring he can outclass you he can do it all we've never had anybody like that Francis Ngannou's team knows this. Yeah, Zaki Koyla. To... Or, or Zaki Koyla. Even George Foreman. Exactly. We'll caution the win. Make it a straight up after school fight. That's what he has to do. 
that doesn't mean you get dirty. None of those antics. Not the grappling. You're not grappling anyway. No, no. You just got to land one shot, and you got to do it in the first two rounds. Otherwise, your life is going to change forever. It's just so bad. It's like that's scary. That's how hard he hit. How could you be a former UFC fighter, top fifteen heavyweight? You train. You did jujitsu. You got a black belt, like, and be so terrible at like breaking down fights or predicting fights and shit. Like he's just so like this is like such a casual opinion on shit. Like no real insights, no interesting hot takes or approaches. Just this is probably even worse than casual. Maybe it's even doing a disservice to the people who out there who are casual fans because like his opinions are just so terrible. Mm -hmm. so, that's how hard Francis hits, and I'll, I'll I'll take I'll take that I'll take that. All right, is that it? Almost. Um, real quick though, would you, if you were Francis, would you go out literally right away, or just kind of feel out first yeah. and then go crazy? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm literally. <laughs> ding ding. <laughs> How much did I make? <laughs> now, but if one of those lands, we're going so sizzler. We're changing the game for it. It's the biggest upset in sports combat history. You're going so sizzler, and you get the rematch no matter what. The only guy that loses if he if uh, Fury gets knocked out is a man named Usyk. Because then you're you, you gotta fight him, and he just got knocked out. It's gonna be a disaster. That fight goes to the garbage, dude. If Francis wins, biggest upset in combat sports history. Yeah. A guy who's never boxed professionally knocks out the perennial. Best. Undefeated. Where did he learn that word? Undefeated. Undisputed. Heavily anyway, anyway, whatever. You heard him hating. Um, he was hating for years. More hating videos of him. Dana and Francis. The only way the Francis deal works out for him, not PFL. That's a different story. The only way it works out for Francis if he gets that big boxing yeah. fight. From that tweet, sounds like it ain't happening. Seems like it. Yeah. Anthony Josh was like, I'm good. Yeah. And also, Tyson has so much going on in the boxing world. As far as the Usyk fight is really what boxing wants to make. Mm -hmm. You have Usyk. You have Dante Wilder there. You have uh, Indy Ruiz, who I don't know if that's in current events. Indy Ruiz. His girlfriend hacked his Twitter. And it got weird. No. Oh, it got weird. You can look that up. Right. It got weird. But... um. So Francis needs to complete so many things in boxing. It'd be weird. I guess he could do it in the meantime till they figure out the Usyk stuff. But when I see that from Francis, I'm like, oh, shit, man. Nobody's biting? That's that okay. sucks, dude. Because remember, we thought for sure that was going to happen. And I think Francis was so sure that was going to happen. That's one of the reasons he was so kind of confident leaving the UFC. Because yeah. if someone, I guarantee if someone came to him and said, while he's in going through the negotiation with the UFC, he went, hey, just so you know, Tyson thing's never happening, dude. We spoke to Tyson. He said it was fun back and forth. He didn't think this was actually going to happen. He's more focused on Usyk and his sport. That's Usyk. never going to happen, dude. Hmm. Maybe Deontay Wilder down the road, you're talking two, three years from now, that's slight, probably 5% chance. But as you're going into negotiations with Dana, just know, boxing's never happening. <laughs> he's such a hater, isn't it? I think Brendan is a bigger hater than the biggest poster on the Fire and the Kids subreddit. Brendan's the biggest hater on earth. Way more than any of the posters on the Fire and the Kids subreddit. Whoever the biggest one is on there, this guy hates more. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Negotiations with Dana, just no. Boxing's never happening. <laughs> I would be willing to bet he would sign with the UFC. The only reason is with PFL is because they're allowing him to box. Boxing's yeah, the biggest mystery in all this. That's probably not going to happen, which I fucking hate saying that. Yeah, hopefully it does, though, for Francis. Yeah, no, I hope it happens for him, man. That would be a no, huge win for Francis. No, you don't. No, you so, don't. You don't hope that at all. You don't hope that at all. Oh, fucking brilliant. I love the hate. I love how much he hates because he can't help it. It comes through. It seeps through his pores. He fucking loves it. He really fucking does. Let's do this one again. One last one. This is a brilliant one. <laughs> it's sure before and after Francis and Stipe too, right? Let's. There's another one. Classic hate from Brendan. Again, I don't know what it is about big black dudes that he hates, but there's definitely something there. So this narrative of 
France is a completely different fighter. He's so much better. Yeah? How so? Yeah? So in which way? Obnoxious. Look how obnoxious and smug. Well, you know, I think, I think mentally he's stronger. He's working on his wrestling and he's a better fighter. Yeah? Which fight proved that? Because the longest fight he's had since the horrible outing of Derek Lewis, which is 15, or was that? Tw- yeah, 15 minutes of complete shit. He's gone. The longest he's gone is a minute 11. Where are you getting your facts from? In what sense has he gotten better? In what sense do you think it's going to be a different Francis against Stipe? Well, his wrestling's a lot better as mentality. Oh, yeah? In what way? I'd love to see it. Well, they say in training, ah, it doesn't count. And there he is. Well, they say, you know, he's at Extreme Couture's. He's in Vegas. I don't give a flying fuck how his training's going. I go based off what happens when the lights are on, the camera's on, and fans are watching, and Scrooge McDuck's in cage side, and there's three judges, and there's a referee. I'm going based off that. I'm going based off real game time. And in real game time, there is no evidence he is any different. If anything, he looked worse his last out against Rosenstruck. Champion Christ. mindset and that champion's heart will beat Francis 100 out of 100 times. Because when the going Christ. gets tough, my money's on Stipe. I'm just not willing to jump on the Francis train saying he's this completely different fighter. He knocked him out in the second round, right? And this is Stipe. You heavy on Stipe. Right? Um... I had Francis winning. You had Francis winning. I like Stipe. You, you, you like Stipe? The lie. That's why Malik got thrown off the podcast, isn't it? He used to remind Brendan about his fight picks and kind of, you know, rag him on it. And Brendan doesn't like that. That's why he got kicked off the pod. <laughs> Brendan doesn't like people reminding him of the mistakes he does. You say he's, a, he's durable. But the fact that he just... <laughs> interesting looking dude interesting looking dude oh that was fucking brilliant i fucking love it love it love it love it love it um <laughs> Chappelle looking like don't go make matter angry <laughs> exactly Koyla. uh Chappelle being a good boy being a very 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 good boy oh mate brilliant 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 oh 